This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get gadgety. It's the awesome cast on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, myself, a video producer, podcaster in the area, and this is the show where we talk about all the techie and gadgety and fun things on the internets with a bunch of people that work around the internets in some way, fashion, or whatnot. Uh, with me on the line from Studio C, whoop, John Chichilla hmm. is with us. On the line? What was this, like a phone? On the line, on the sky. On the, on the on line, the, on the internet? On the hangout lines. Hey, hey, how's it going tonight? Hey, he's a gadget guru from Big Bank International. That's, what's what's up what's up over at uh, studio a studio I can't, a? I can't see well i'll tell you what studio a we got over on the couch john carmen has joined us he's got matt talk 20 with him left over from the royal rumble yeah, party a left, few weeks ago left over rumble dog that was just your st- rumble dog yes that was, that's just your stash for when you come visiting right that's it's becoming that because no one i don't even like this no one likes this no one likes that i've never tried it kids like it kids yeah. like it no no, no. I don't think we can. Well, no, I don't we, think we can say that. We, we can't endorse that. Right, they're not on this fun. show. <laughs> no, it's like Kool Aid. I guess it's it's like tricks. It's it's for kids. No, but no. not legally. Um, John is one of the OG podcasters. OG, not, yeah. Man, he's called not currently old. retired. Retired, Ret- pod- yeah. You retire from podcasting. Yeah. If you can retire from independent wrestling. You can retire from podcasts. I, I would be coming out of retirement if I did a podcast. Exactly. Exactly. The G-Spot 2 coming back at you. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're doing it with television series. Why not with podcasts? Uh, our last episode was Don't Call It a Comeback. And it's a good thing you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you should You should actually go back through all your podcasts and do like a reboot. And you could just redo all the existing podcasts. Yeah. I mean, just same news. <laughs> same mm-hmm. exact mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Same interviews. You may, or or you do like you do like another thing that happened recently, and you're just like you may think that this is a sports podcast, but it's just the G spot. We had, I mean, a lot of our podcast was was drag queens, right? And, yeah, I mean, that was before RuPaul's Drag. Queens. They were very educational because I'm like, oh, I wonder what this is about. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, but it, it would be more mainstream now because yeah, everyone, yeah, it would be, it would everyone's be. Seen absolutely drag race, so yeah. So, uh, but those are still available floating out in the internet somewhere. They are, yeah. And I mean, we interviewed some of the, I think we had, we had Sharon Needles on, you know, we had some Mm -hmm. of the, a winner, a drag race winner, you know, long before anyone knew who they were. That sounds like our show. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, But anyways, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can uh, check us out live here at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook uh, for Awesome Cast and subscribe to Awesome Cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, and the Google Play Podcast app, video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Please join the Awesome Cast group. We've been having a lot of great conversations in there, people sharing stories and videos and, and everything of the cool things, that, and a few of them make them into our show notes and onto the show as well. And of course, you uh, thanks to our streaming partner, RiversEdgePGH.com. That's been carrying us there every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, as well as the 405Media.com that's carrying us 9 a.m. Pacific Time, five days a week. That's a noon Eastern Time for you guys if you want to drop into the stream and catch up on the mayhem. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Patreon. Excuse me, I'm getting the hiccups. I'm getting pizza hiccups. Thank you, Slice on Broadway, uh, for the pizza hiccups. <laughs> But <laughs> patreon.com slash awesome cast. Uh, thank you, everybody. I know the Patreons just went through for the month. Thanks to our $5 coffee club uh, Patreon or Matt Weller, Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter, as well as uh, Michael Fedor of Mike Fedor Show on Twitter, as well at the fan of the show dollar level. His brother, uh, David, is going to be actually joining us on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, recording this evening as well. So they're going to have a lot of fun. So we'll, we're going to have, have both of them have been, will have been on the Sorgatron Media Network. 
uh, after tonight here. Uh, you guys can support the show as well. Literally help us keep the lights on here and uh, get a shout every week at patreon.com slash awesome cast. So I want to start the awesome things of the week, you guys. Because I got a sweet new jacket. Is it? That is a mighty fine jacket. Sweet new jacket. This lift jacket. This uh, 1K club uh, jacket over here. So, so... I remember when I first started playing around with ride sharing, and I think I mostly leaned on Uber because Lyft, you know, Lyft wasn't rolling as heavy here in Pittsburgh, I think, at the time. But but John John comes in. Carmen comes. I gotta go last names this week. Uh, mm-hmm. Carmen yeah. comes comes in and is like, well, you know, eventually you could get the sweet jacket. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> rolls in with his, and and I was very jealous. And I finally went over. I think I'm about eleven hundred now, actually, from the time that they kicked me the uh, the email. Uh, so this this is nice. Yeah, no, it is a nice jacket. Surprisingly good quality for a free jacket. You mm-hmm. know, um, my loop broke, so you know, careful about hanging it. But uh, other than that, well, there's a loop on it. I haven't investigated that. Yeah, far. you can hang, can <laughs> hang it for a while anyway. Uh, but it was really cool because you get a box, you, you you get the box, and uh, get you guys the visuals here. Uh, in a moment, but uh, you know, you, you get this uh, sweet box where it says 1K driver on it. Um, there's a little bit um, inside as well. Let's see if it, oh, I thought it would let me do the story on here. Like, there's little messages. Oh, I got a card. It's hiding here on the desk. Nice little um, thank you card from them. And this is the little stuff. This is the little stuff. Like, this is how Lyft rolls. I also get like the latest Lyft community email where it's like passenger took a selfie with the driver and it got mentioned on uh you know some celebrity took a lift ride and you know had some positive feedback and everything like that and the people that uh you know uh, helped somebody's bad day because they had candy in their chargers in their car you know things like that like and i think that's why you know you see uber is doing the we're actually going to be nice to people now and have all these extra features and everything lyft has always been the anti-uber and i mm-hmm. credit uber's exist well i credit uber's existence with Lyft's existence, right? But of course, but they didn't just copy them. They said we we want to be the nice Uber. So because Uber had such a bad reputation, not just the CEO but the company, and and you've noticed a difference, uh, especially initially with even the riders on mm-hmm, average. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that that just pushed Lyft to be the the nice version of that. Yeah, that's definitely the case. I, I've I've said to to about everybody like uh, generally, I have less incidents in my car. Since I've gone Lyft. Yeah. Um, because just Uber gets everybody. It's anybody that thinks of needing a ride will go to it. And it, it, it's just the it's attitude. Sa- it's safer. It's, it's safer because yeah. Uber doesn't even interview their drivers mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. test their drivers. So I had a question about that because I finally, Bobby F. J. Town kept telling me the, um, I can't remember the show that on Comedy Central, um, but but they they did something where they were trying to infiltrate Uber by having these taxi drivers like join it and everything and there's a bit about it but but in LA I think they do they do oh well maybe in some so markets they sure. did they did not hear and no. I think generally they do not do that Mm-mm. but but I, that was surprised me to see that and oh, see that there was I've heard some word. horror stories about mm-hmm. Uber drivers I mean aggressive violent even behavior uh, I heard about an Uber driver that drove the wrong way down 376. I don't know how Ooh. that's possible any time of night. And I, I have, I've definitely done my fair share of going the wrong way off a of one way with a passenger in a car. That's a little but different. Just, than I mean, coming but from that's the like airport. that's like in a back neighborhood yeah. where where the roads don't make sense and like on the edge of Wilkinsburg or something, right? Right. But not a little safer than driving <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> yeah, the, the wrong full way. on highway, the wrong way. Um, and I always get like weird stories, like even even the people on Lyft. And, and I was I said somebody just the other day when they were telling me uh, about was it one of their horror stories. I was like, well, if the person's doing that, um, they're not going to be around too long yeah. on this system. Oh, I, I heard nice. a guy told me a, a, a Uber driver, and it's, all of these stories are Uber drivers, mm-hmm. and they're coming from mostly I guess Lyft passengers. But an Uber driver actually showed up drunk, and Jeez. he he pulled his girlfriend out of the car, said, "Get out." And told the guy, you know, yelled at the guy, and and of course he reported them. But he said he watched the guy speed off past through two stops, just blew two stop signs on the way out. You know, hopefully no one got hurt. But I mean, to show up drunk, to you know, as a driver, mm-hmm. w- what are you thinking? That's crazy. That's crazy. I you know, and none. I mean, things happen with Lyft drivers too. Um, I, but then again, I just it, it it generally the drivers I've had have been nicer. 
Yes, I, I well, I've always taken Lyft. Ever since I heard those stories, mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. I've never taken an Uber. We did. I think I think we might have taken an Uber in New York City every once in a while. Like it's the backup. I would right? take a self driving Uber. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And of course, it did that with the media day and everything. So, um, but well, then that solves the problem, doesn't it? It does. But as you mentioned, once they got rid of, once Uber got rid of their CEO. It like it was like the next day they sent out mass emails. We're we're mm-hmm. we're friendly now. What and, was it? A uh, hundred and eighty days of change. Yeah, yeah, it was. And here here's the list of things that Lyft has already been doing that we're going to do now. Right, was really the interpretation too. A hundred and eighty. We're we're literally going to do a one eighty and be nice <laughs> now. Now we're we're getting a question in the chat room over here. Mm-hmm. As a driver, can you decline picking up someone who requests you? Absolutely. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. At any point, if, if I can be right, I can be driving the person halfway to their destination. If I feel unsafe, I can pull over and tell them to get out of my car because it is still at the end of the day. And this was a thing that was even um, driven home a little bit on the Uber system too. If you in, in, at the end of the day, it is still your car, and you make that decision. I've rejected people, like especially when they show up and they have more than four passengers. They, a lot of times they're very angry about that. Um, I've been called some pretty nasty words on that. But uh, no, it is your well, call. Well, I mean, you, you, you legally had to reject them if they had more than four passengers. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll just duck down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. We can squeeze in. I was like, no, there's a cop over there because you're in the middle of the strip. Right. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah, your $5 maybe tip is not worth that. No, no, it isn't. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, uh, but no, I just, you know, this is kind of nice. Just saying. Although uh, what I what I what I really want is one of those sweet light up lift placards. Yeah, those are not available in this market. Yet I yet. see them. Yeah, I see them. Right, where are these people coming from? They're they're lift transplants. They're, they're, that uh, might be actually <laughs> that might absolutely might be. I had somebody in my car that they they were driving lift in like uh, uh, Florida and they were going to do it here too, and I was like, Yeah, I think you that? I think you need to sign up again. To mm-hmm. a new market, I don't think you can just go and. You, I'm not sure. I think you have to get registration in that state. Like I, I'm, like your car registration. Yeah, I think your car registration has to be transferred Maybe. to the state that you're working in. So I can't just take my car, go to a different town, and turn it on in like Columbus. Right. You, yeah, you can't be on vacation and be like, hey, I'm gonna pick up some Uber or pick up some Lyft. Which I think is a really horrible idea if you're just dropping into a different town. No, which people too. probably do. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm sure people just do it. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, there is, like, an issue of, like, I think nothing can really stop me from turning it on with a rent-a-car or somebody else's car. Right. But if I do and get reported, then you'll get booted off the You system. could turn it on while you're walking down the street. Just walk out to the dude. Hey, hmm? get on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you could turn on the app at any point you could turn on the app while you're on the toilet but it, you know you're not supposed to no no you're not supposed to that's not helpful to anyone <laughs> no, <it isn't. laughs> let's go for a ride uh carmen what is your awesome thing of the week oh man i'm glad no one took this uh the falcon heavy test flight spacex the heavy one the big one did you guys this watch? thing that happened today? Do you know about space? Uh, I, I am aware of space. Okay. I flipped on Twitter uh, when I went to go get my pizza. Okay. Kind of around the same time. But but I was not driving when I did this. But but <laughs> but the periscope was up of the shot of the Tesla. And is that a mannequin in a spacesuit that's going up okay, or something? So, I mean, so there were a couple cool, uh, cool visuals right i mean the thing first of all it launched and it didn't blow up because i mean this was three times the size of the previous rockets uh, it was actually three of the falcon 9s connected so you know if it blew up it'd be bigger um so it didn't blow up good and then the landing of the the side cores uh they you got to find the video of this you, you're on the mannequin which is which is which is maybe the coolest visual which is the actual tesla roadster with a mannequin in a SpaceX suit traveling to Mars. And I mean, it's it's out there now. There's a car out there now traveling to Mars. There's a car in space. In space, traveling to Mars. They say it's a mannequin. <laughs> it might be a long... We have no... It might be Elon Musk this whole time. Wait. It's really, that's how I'm getting there. It could be Elon Musk's enemy. <laughs> It could be. It could, this is live right now. Oh, no, no, it was. Oh, no. now, now this is live. This is completely live. Is that live? Let's see. They, 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 hold on. I want to find the shot. We're calling him Starman. We're calling him uh, Starman. They played a lot of Bowie. I love. Of course they did. Of course they did. Oh, here's um, the Earth going by behind it. <laughs> like I love the straight-on shot of it. It's pretty amazing. 
So, <laughs> wow. This is great. So, are they going to keep doing this? Like, are they going like to keep putting cars in space? No, no, no. Well, yeah, they're probably going to do that eventually. But are they going to continue to stream this guy on his way to Mars? How I don't know how far you can stream. I don't know how far YouTube. I mean, Sorg, remember reaches. how long it took you to get FiOS? Yeah, it's true. That <laughs> is true. You should have seen the bill from Comcast. <laughs> um, but anyways, but uh, no, this is cool. So this is like kind of the next step. And since I just watched the latest uh, Clover- Cloverfield Paradox movie, uh, this th- I need some good feeling space stuff right now. Uh, oh, so well, if if you can find the the footage, that looks like the um. This is the animation. That's the animation. Uh huh. The, well, the animation shows the landing. Uh, we, we didn't get footage of the <laughs> of the main core, the central core, but uh, the the two sides landed just like in the animation, and then the camera cut out for the main. But I think if you can get actual footage of those sides, it's amazing that this was that this really happened. Wow! So a uh, super coordinated, like basically uh, so, a rocket. Yeah, back up, back up. Uh, the rockets just kind of came down, and now we can use them again, right? We're gonna they're they're gonna use all all three of them again. Okay. Yeah. So now now like everything is reusable. This is the stuff that was the, pretty the, much those yeah. these were those rockets that were like coming down and landing, and, yeah, see, and just so okay, there's so the animation. That's the animation. the The live video looked pretty much just like that. And this is just the the rockets are coming down and landing on a pad. And we've seen a lot of the failure videos where they're out on like a boat or something, right? And you're saying this is the live feed where I think your I think your live feed is past the point where they well, it's not live oh, anymore. Right about, yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely not live anymore, but it looks like they're preparing. Oh, you can see it coming up on the a landing app. Sorry, audio uh, listeners, but yeah, there's like several so, several views of it coming down, attempting to land. Oh no, and, okay, yeah, there it is, yeah, right there. there. It is, yeah. yeah. It looks just like that the is animation real life. we just saw. That that that's that something, really happened. That's I watched that, that live. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I guess putting a man on the moon was pretty cool too, if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but, but either way, either way, we know a Tesla is in space right now. How many times have I brought up conspiracy theories on this show? A few times. Yeah, a few times, especially the moon landing. Do we have any so chat? What you're saying is this is all just an animation. This is all just an animation. <laughs> W- this time. this is all just an yes, animation. Yes, this show right here is all just an animation. <laughs> we we put a lot of work in. There's a lot of render farm work for this <laughs> going Thousands on. Thousands of computers. Yes, you should, you should see what's behind this weird wall. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> no, that's awesome. And you can check it out. Uh, well, all this is right now is at SpaceX.com. That happened today. Webcast, and that we was today. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Tuesday the 6th. It was postponed. February over and over I mean, for years mm-hmm. and then the government shut down so it and i don't think anyone actually knew when it was going to happen because they, they are working in conjunction with nasa yeah it's because the it, cape canaveral yeah. um, pad launch pad yeah yeah so they're using government facilities um so that that affects that so that's awesome and the last time i dropped on one of these streams i just saw a rocket scientist completely ge- geeking out over over oh, science yeah. and numbers. No, they're they're having some mad dog. Tonight. There might have been. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> it's mad dog at uh, SpaceX tonight. Um, so, uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing? I don't know. I don't know if it's fair to follow that up. Oh, not a problem. Um, and I don't know if we covered this on the show. I I hadn't heard this announcement last year. Maybe you did, and you covered it. But um, Patreon is launching a new feature that they announced last year. Um, and it's an it's the ability to kind of what we do with gold content, mm-hmm. but it's it's in the the thought process of kind of like a Snapchat story. Um, so you're going to be able to use the Patreon app on your phone and create uh, additional behind the scenes type special access mm-hmm. content, and you can actually target it to share certain things publicly, or you can limit it to backers, which I thought was a pretty darn cool idea. Um, unfortunately, at this time. They are not letting you do it via the browser. Um, and I'm sure this is to also direct people to their mobile app. Um, it, it's only within the mobile app on iOS and Android. Um, I, I think it'd be pretty cool, depending on how this works, you could probably take some of your content and actually upload it into the app from your phone with some some cool rigging of the video and mm-hmm. then it would get you get you an easy way to get that th- type of gold content or for any patreon user for that matter getting that limited content up that limited edition content up to the service i can see this as a thing that like you know as, as certain creators 
you know, maybe maybe less the, the, the less connected of us, the ones that are creating something and putting it out. Like, you helped with a music video. Here's the behind the scenes of a music video. And it's it's just that much easier to do that, right? Because mm-hmm. there's plenty of people creating things that are not media per se. Or at least like full-on video media like this, right? So I, I like that as, as kind of a thing. Now, I would be interested to see if our Patreon supporters would be interested in something like this. What would they like to see? Because we're already doing a lot of that behind the scenes like on on Instagram and and you know in stories and and then of course we do have our kind of side conversations on on the awesome cast gold too right so I I don't know where we would fit into that but I like the idea so I feel like you I, yeah I, I and I feel like to get additional support for your product I, I feel like if you could do kind of the intro or the advertisement, like want to see more behind the scenes and put that all on everyone, come visit us on Patreon and then have that additional content over there. Cause it kind of gives you, it's almost like building your own little paywall. It is, isn't it? I mean, and I think that's kind of the point, right? Mm-hmm. Cause you want to, you want to give incentive for them to want to put money into it, but hopefully right. your initial content is good enough that people are already interested in enough to want to give a little bit, just extra incentive. I, 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 I thought of it for kind of, you know, how we did some green screen stuff, all that type of behind the scenes, just have that role. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm big. I still actually log into to Instagram from time to time to watch people do video editing and uh, photo work live because I, I find that totally interesting. So I haven't done that for a while. I, I used to do the, especially with the wrestling shows, I used to uh, stream the video edit, right? And then mm-hmm. the podcast edits and things like that. Really? I yeah. didn't know you did that. Yeah, for a little bit um, now. And uh, I know some other people do that. I know Buzzy does that with Pitchworks. Whenever he's editing that from week to week, I'll get the little notification for that. And don't you so, feel like someone's watching over your shoulder? Yeah. And then, yeah. What's that? Yeah, and I like I like it from the aspect of uh, I'm... I only edit video when I need to or, or for some specific reason. And mm-hmm. if I have free time to watch... It kind of gives me a general idea of, oh, that's an interesting way to do that. And, or, and oh, I didn't know you could do that. And it's something, you know, I thought for the the wrestling editing, it, it was a lot, it was interesting because you got to see some of the show that we were working on. And I'm like, two camera, two camera switching and editing in, um, in um, Final Cut. So it's a little bit of it plays and I'm camera one, camera two the entire time. But of course, you know, it's not a straight watch through because screen split off and you know there's a lot of mm, let's go back and change that right, shot. you're cutting your back yeah, up yeah, yeah 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 so i mean it's m- more streamlined but not completely so that could be a little bit more interesting i know and and i'm always iffy on doing it with some of my clients because i don't know if they want their footage out there before approved and things like that right, sure so but now but, were you filming the whole thing or were you editing that down, I mean, you were just filming the entire editing process. Um, so the, uh, you just, make a just mistake here and there. And... Just either, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, you're doing clips of it. What what I was doing, I was using the. I think we were using the screen capture. What were we doing it with? We were pull, yeah, we were pulling the screen capture into like Facebook Live. Okay. Uh, I think I just used maybe Wirecast or something like that and kicked it up there and uh, and it was just whatever was on my screen is what you saw. All right. So. You know, like, really I would be I would not, be des- nervous, not I describing, think. just doing. Right. Why would you be nervous? You'd be like like seeing a mistake like, or something. Yeah, yeah. Like someone's watching over your. Well, people are literally watching over your shoulder. But like, that's a ridiculous way of doing that. You should have never done yeah, it that way. Yeah, yeah. There's a million. <laughs> oh, I, I yeah. never got enough judgmental people on my stuff to be doing that. So <laughs> I'd be judging. I'd be judging myself. Like, yeah, it's all me. <laughs> No, it, it wouldn't be a problem. No one would be. But it's all subjective, and it's all like you know, because we uh, uh, up to this point we've been shooting like two independent cameras that weren't really communicating with each other. So it's like, all right, we got to pick the best shots of the two, right? You know, and just hopefully have two at least one of the were good shots. They didn't both look over here at the same time, kind right, of thing, right? right? Um, so I don't think there's much to. I don't think there's a lot of mistakes to show off right. because it's it's the process of working. You're through mostly just it. choosing one yeah. or two. Yeah. So it's uh, or you know going through things and making the, you know making choices if it's like a fuller edit. You know, like I think I have done it with their like you know we're doing a three minute segment video and we have an interview here and this and this and, and mm-hmm. going through which is you know me just kind of whittling down interviews and seeing what works right so you know it may not be the most exciting thing but people interested in the process like chilla might want to see how that goes right 
It, I, I like seeing, and, and I, I'll be honest, I like the ones too that show you kind of the, not just a screen share, but an over the, the shoulder because like I've seen some pretty crazy, not overly expensive home setups where they, you know, they do something crazy with two monitors and a tablet or they do, they have these, they have these very interesting setups that also lend to their workflow, mm-hmm. um, which, and it's kind of neat to see them, how they, how they generally do their workflow and then get into the editing or the, the photo work or whatnot. So I don't know. So it, to me, it's an easy way to learn. And when you look at all the people that do like makeup tutorials and all kinds of stuff that people watch on YouTube today, I just feel like it's a, this is one of those ways that you can easily learn something by watching someone else do it. Well, and the other thing you have to take into consideration is people have different processes for doing things. Um, depending on what, what apps you're using for video editing, for instance, there might be differences. And even within the same app, people use different processes differently. So, I mean, it's it's the common ground, but different approach. Mm-hmm. I haven't <laughs> done video editing in a while, but I was using Adobe. And just, I mean, look at Adobe Photoshop how many ways there are to do oh, yeah. basically the same thing. Oh, yeah. Sorg tells me all the time. He's like, I can't believe you're doing it that way. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is the way that I know how no, to do it. And this way I'm comfortable. <laughs> no, and people say the same thing about me, especially with audio editing. What do you mean you edit your po- audio podcast in Final Cut? It's what I'm familiar with. So I got a little self-conscious about that and stopped doing See? it. See? <laughs> So, but uh, then like, nobody's it was just a disclaimer. Nobody has actually said that. I feel like I'm weird for doing it. Yeah, I, so. I don't think anyone would say anything. I I just think that I would feel weird. Yeah, I mean, don't buy three hundred. Don't don't pay three hundred dollars for a Final Cut to edit podcasts. But I have it. I'm not going to pay more for other things. I don't feel like going back to audition. So, guess you'll feel weird about it. Yeah, yeah, and I got to do a video version anyways of like basically everything I do throw a logo in there or whatever you know so why not just live in the same program but i can see if you can make that uh, an add-on mm-hmm. you know a mm-hmm. value add absolutely absolutely well hey you know what uh, our good friends make it easy to pizza here in beachview our good friends at slice on broadway hey there there's a uh, going to pick up uh, tonight's pizza and uh, thank you also to our friends at slice on broadway they helped out a lot uh, we had a a bit of a super bowl brunch with our friends at bold pittsburgh sports uh, in here on Sunday, and they helped uh, supply along with uh, some other groups as well. There's a lot of fun. You can check that out. Sorgatron Media Master Feed for Bold Sports Super Bowl Brunch. But uh, our good friends at Slice on Broadway supported Pittsburgh Podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here in Beachview, right up the street on the tracks, as well as Carnegie PA on Main Street, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and uh, down in East Liberty, East End, whatever you, kids want to call it these, this day, these days, uh, right down from all those fancy restaurants. And, uh, man, I keep missing my chance to go in and check out the new restaurant. Uh, I literally was we, – we, we gave up on uh, one eatery that they were sending everybody for, for a conference a couple weeks ago, and somebody literally pulled us into a bar on our way to Slice. Uh, so The East Liberty one? Uh, yeah, That's yeah, that, I was yeah. on my way. Yeah. I, I forget. I can't even tell you what bar we ended up, but a, a bunch of other people were there that were wanted to go eat with. So, uh, so I'll get there. I'll get there, Rico. I'll get to the new location. I swear. <laughs> I drive past it enough that I'm going to get in. But I know, I, I know, members of a wrestling mayhem show are really happy, and other people are really happy to see it in their neighborhood over there where they're living or working. So go get your slice in the four corners of the of the Pittsburgh area. And uh, check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Thanks a lot to those guys. All right, let's get into, we have uh, some submitted stories here as well. Yes, Missy? You know, there's there's a story right here out of Pittsburgh in the show notes. There now, is. I think you should cover that, especially given the time of year that it is. Are you guys familiar with the fish fry map? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I read it in the notes today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I was really excited uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, the broadcasts um, um, come in here and record uh, about once a month. And, and I never know the guests that come in. Right. And it's been amazing. Like people I know are people that I, I have worked with their groups or something like that. But this one was exciting. They, they just posted uh, just last week. I think this went up episode 33. Uh, you can check out at broadcast hyphen podcast dot com. Uh, but they had on um, Holland Barmer who is uh, the inventor of the Pittsburgh Lenten fish fry map. This has been going for a couple years now. I believe Code Pittsburgh has kind of taken over the project and has helped it as well. Uh, And you can go to codeforpittsburgh.github.io 
slash fish fry map. And you get a nice little uh, Google map situation here. I think this is Google Maps. Wow. And there's all your fish fries and information. Here you go. The American Serbian Club over on Sarah Street, Pittsburgh. Uh, let's see. Homemade pierogies? Unsure. Alcohol served? Yes. Lunch provided? Yes. Take out available, handicap accessible type of venue. Open on Good Friday. All that information there uh for the churches and other places and american legions and whatever the case may be uh so when so one of the most important things this time of year is where do you get your fish fry near me apparently anywhere or if you want to tour all these fine fine locations you can do that right how many people were involved in the bill i know that one person created the map but you think it was initially her, and I think she's talked about it a little bit. You're going to have to listen to the broadcast episode 33 for that okay, information. Okay, I, I get it. <laughs> so I, I know. Feel, I think I have. You said it's a couple years old, so yeah, I think I have heard bit. of it. Um, I've only been to one fish fry. I in feel my like life. I feel like I first heard this from like Mikey and Big Bob, or maybe that your jag off or something. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Either one, right? It's awesome. So uh, go check that out uh, over on the broadcast, uh, a part of the Sorgatron Media Network, of course. Is it broadcast because they're women? Is I, that a play on words? I think I think it is. Yeah, no, I'm not joking. No, it is. It's it is. broadcast. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, yeah, and it's all women. It's all women on the show for the 33 episodes. They're, they're going to be celebrating their first year, um, I believe, on Valentine's Day. Uh, and they have, their, they have their first return guest on that day. So yeah, cool. And remember, good. candy goes on sale the next day. Absolutely. I can't wait to celebrate uh February fifteenth with my wife. Mm hmm Discount chocolate. Mm-hmm. Discount chocolate. Just as good. Yep. She doesn't look happy about that. I, no, no, I guess I guess not. She's either not paying attention or she's really paying attention. <laughs> I'm kind of paying attention. <laughs> I'm I'm stuck on the fish fry, so oh, okay. we're we're good. <laughs> This is one that keeps. I feel like we've. This has come up before, and I'm always weird about this story. Um, but our friend Laura here, uh, she. I can't even look at these pictures. Oh, no. There's a. She shared a link of a guy that he, he's making helicopters and drones out of dead animals. Well, they're his dead animals. <laughs> I guess so. But it, how does he do? Like, are they made from the bones? How does this they're ta- work? They're taxidermy. They're ta- yeah, they're taxidermy. There's a shark it's playing. Like, it's not a functional part of the. No, machine. no, no. It's more like you're dressing up the drone with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> rat, Ratatoui. Uh, there's a rat. That's a rat on a on a three propeller drone. Um, I'm. I just. It. It. This freaks me out. This is just. What is that? An ostrich? Hmm. I don't like this sort. No, I don't like this either. No. Uh, the, 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 this is just weird. Ostriches can fly. <laughs> if but you... They don't need your help when they're dead. No, Wait, I guess ostriches... not. Can they fly? No, they can't fly. Can they? They lay eggs. I don't think ostriches can fly officially, no. Now they can. So, I, oh, with the close-up oh, of the cat. <laughs> the cat The cat looks like he got, he got like the drone stuck up his butt <laughs> and is reacting to that. Um, it, it, it's scary. It's very scary. I don't know what to think of that one. Oh. Thank you, Laura, for sharing that on the group. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to thank her for sharing that. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep. All right. And this is, and this was another one, uh, uh, that, uh, Missy actually shared on the group. Missy, do you want to talk about this one? Hey, Do? Is she still not talking to are us? Are you still, are you? I'm working on... <laughs> Tweets and oh, yeah, that's Facebook fine. posts. So this is a uh, Hado Hado uh, H A D O. Um, basically, the idea is it's, an, it's a VR game. Now, now the story the the story on here is not relatively new. It's from uh, sometime last year. Uh, but it's a and the video is of course you know a promo dressed up kind of video. Uh, but the idea is you're wearing these AR glasses and you're like throwing. S- uh, yeah, snowballs. Uh, you're throwing like electric balls, like like Dragon Ball Z, basically. Ooh. So it looks like it's a dodgeball kind of situation, right? And you, you can you can make a motion and you create these shields to block the balls and everything. And you're basically blocking these things. And it's coordinated. And these are teams. The what they're showing here in the video are teams that do this. And they had a World Cup of it. They're saying one hundred twenty thousand dollars in cash prizes here on the video. Um, this is pretty cool. And this is, um, what country? It was Korea, isn't it? 
Is this real? I mean, this the, is awesome, the but I cannot have, imagine it looks this good if you're no, playing. Exactly. The teams have these <laughs> uniforms. It, it looks like anime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, oh, it, we're still in the Matrix. It's very, very dressed up, right? And you're just like, man, this can't really be like this, right? They, they uh, need to give they need to give a live feed of what the person's seeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But interestingly enough, it, towards the end, towards the end of that one clip, it looks like someone has had like a cell phone or something. It was a giant cell phone wall linked to their wrist. So I wonder if there's some kind of so here, device that's powering this. I, I don't here's know. A, here's a video in the article that Missy shared from um, uh, uh, IGN.com. And this is it, and this people, looks more and, real. And people are dressing up like oh there was a there was an entire team I think before I switched to it that was like Dragon Ball Z. Okay, and so that was so, a promo. Okay, and so this is real. This is what it looks like, and this is the view of what it looks like, right? Um, so not as clean and awesome, but still pretty freaking awesome. No, it, it is awesome. <laughs> like that shield's kind of floating out there, right? That that they that they placed in everything. Um, and we got a little bit of a camera, yeah, but so we, it's cool. We got to get the view of everything, and and you know they're doing that kind of um, hollow lens thing. Well, <laughs> the the video, just to clarify, the one that you're watching right now mm-hmm. is actually from their 2017 competition, which was just in December. Right. So that just happened. So it looks like it's overlaid on everything, but everything is kind of spatially in there. And these are it looks like they're wearing um, those are it looks like they're iPhones. So they kind of have a Google Cardboard ish iPhone kind of situation. So not a lot of you know, other than the software itself, like not a lot of you know extra technology is going into this. It's not. And, good. and with the phone directly in front of them like that, I'm guessing they're it's using the camera on the phone mm-hmm. for them to actually see what's around them, and then it must be overlaying. Yeah, absolutely. content on that on that live video. This is like there was, a, there was a shot for a second there. What the point of view for a second? They're not showing a lot of their point of view. Uh, they keep they keep going to it. I, think. <clears throat> I love these guys just have like like Pikachu hoodies. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if the way they actually created that was they had someone that was like play kind of playing the game, mm-hmm. but they're seeing right standing off to the side. Standing off just, to the side, right? Recording. That could be too. That could be too. So yeah, yeah, that does look like it's kind of off to the side there, and people in the back, maybe. But, um, yeah, I'm guessing they're not. They can't see outside of the, the display, right? Or the the goggles. Mm-hmm. And I've seen this with like, um, what's it? The Gear VR, where you can kind of put it in. You can turn the camera on so you can see what's around you, versus mm-hmm. having to take the whole head unit off so yeah the the HTC has a uh, the Vive has a has a thing where you look down and you can actually turn on a camera on the outside so you can see your hands uh you know okay. if, you, if you need to look at your phone or something right mm-hmm. so um no it, it, that looks cool so that, it, and that kind of answers the question a little bit of that function um if you had listened to gold last week we talked about kind of a google cardboard thing that was for ar for some reason and it was just like wait what, did we need this we didn't know if there was applications that applied to that 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 you put something on like a google uh cardboard or gear vr but it's doing ar through the camera and just showing you the view through the camera right right so so there's something right there thanks to missy that completely compares uh, that situation on a on a very stripped down and dumbed down version Mm. the pokemon go when it goes into ar yeah you see what's going on like you, you have the pokemon sitting on your desk how many times have you taken? Sure, but but I'm saying about the application that like you're holding a, like the phone is right in front of your face and it's like glasses. Yeah, it, you know we like, I hadn't seen up to that point like this kind of application. So now I think we have a little better idea of what people would be doing with something like that. So, um, speaking of glasses, hmm, 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 were you gonna bring up the glasses? The Intel glasses? Yeah. The Intel ones. Did they make it in here? I <laughs> the, the, Yeah, they're um exclusive Intel. It's down in the chat just above or down in the notes just above Carmen's. I think I saw a, a post from you or a Yeah, tweet. I shared that cuz yeah. I was really excited about this. So this was like a, a Verge ex- exclusive that popped up yet uh yeah, yesterday. I was just going through and it would just hit all the social medias and it was on their front page. Intel, this is a lab thing. This is not a product that's out. This is a lab thing. It's going to developers here in the next couple of months. But it is, think Google Glass, think it looks like glasses. And there's not much of these glasses that look odd. They look 
not too different than glasses I'm wearing now, to be quite honest. And yeah, and the idea is if you're on video, you see this kind of red kind of display. It, it, it's basically projecting, and I can't remember all the terminology. If it was yeah, like, there, was, there were some mirrors involved and some directly some, into your eyeballs involved. Yeah, it's basically projecting whatever it's projecting into the back of your retina. So you, so don't, you, to, so you don't have to focus on it. It's just there. Well, it, it not not that it's just there because if you're looking straight through your glasses like you would normally look, you don't see it. Right, you have to look down. Right, but but you don't have to f- try to focus your eyes on something close. Right, so you don't right. have to refocus. So the idea is, if you look like I'm looking down to the you know right of my glasses, you know down in that corner, then you'll see it. Then you see it. So it's not there floating and distracting or anything like that clearly that was a problem they were trying to solve because they Mm -hmm. they talked about that extensively in the video and you talked about uh being able to just turn your head one direction to dismiss Mm -hmm. a notice so there's a little bit of that head nod thing like i know with google class there was like the nod thing to Mm -hmm. to accept something or or say okay or something or in and so or an eye an eye you know kind of glance would, would trigger some things so there's a bit of that happening so this thing, otherwise than some odd motions, like... Very similar to Google Glass. Very similar, a little more subtle because the sensors are better, probably. And and less intrusive. Yeah. There's no camera. There's no camera. That part is not... <laughs> you could imagine if Google Glass didn't have a camera. So you can go to the theater. So you can go to the theater, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, and that's the other thing. They look like regular glasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all of the spy movies that we watched growing up where people put on a pair of glasses and they were, were like super spy techie, essentially this is them. So mm. that last thing in um in Kingsman where they said, oh, no, all the technology is fine. We don't have anything special, you know, for, for spy gear. Yeah. You know, this is kind of that last that's bit. That's funny. Because that's one thing they did have was that in the AR glasses where you saw everybody around the table and everything, right? right. So now... This is all retail technology. It, we, not retail yet, but very close to retail technology right. <laughs> at this point. So I'm excited. Chilla, you're probably excited because we are glasses I, wearers. Yeah, I, I am excited. I actually it, it liked the camera in the Google Glass I, personally. Um I'm what saying, I'm interested and, in, and, and, I, and of course, of course, Chilla, we traded and bartered, and now he has my Google Glass, and he used them for well after I did. Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm interested in is, like, there's, I'm not seeing, like, with Google Glass, you could look at a picture, you could look at, you could look at a bunch of data. This looks like it's more based for general graphics and text overlay. So I'm interested in, is this going to be able to do a lot? from a intense graphics perspective. Can I, I watch a can I watch a movie in the bottom left hand corner while no, I'm working at work? I want to tell you straight up, no, because I think everything is red. Okay. I don't think there's a second color in the way they've done this. But so it's a red but, but maybe two, three, four point oh, they could, right? Because they're they're projecting this one color of thing. I think it's all red. Uh, okay. And, and there, there was a good there was good explanation. They're like, well, what do you see this going with and everything like that? And they're like, listen, we're building the platform. Nobody knew that the iPhone would mean. They literally said that meant Uber was going to be a thing, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. But the fact that it was invented and it was a thing, and somebody took it and had this idea of a way to use it, it you know, and that happened multiple times with a device like this that we all have now, that changed the game for so much. Yeah. So basically, they're saying we're building the platform, we're going to get it in the hands of developers, and then we can, you know, uh. You know, we, we, we can see what happens next, basically. Right? Well, they're very focused on the user experience of the glasses themselves, mm-hmm. of making something that you can wear comfortably and not appear out of place. And um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think they will be probably building more of that functionality back in once they get this end. Absolutely. Did I did I never put your name in here correctly? Me? Is that, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering that because I kept seeing my name pop I did up too. over. I don't think it's saved when I put his <laughs> name in, and I just noticed it now. So sorry about that on the video, and sorry to John Carmen for that. So, anyways, uh, so I already knew it. You, I mean, yeah, I know you know your name, but I just wanted to say, you know, uh, I apologize for not letting anybody else know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to give a shout out. I will let people know, and I won't screw this up. I swear about uh, Millvale Music Festival. Mark your calendar for May twelfth. 2018. Hey, that's this year, you guys. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming in there. They take over the town of Millvale. 
course, it's right outside the city, uh, right across the bridge. If you're not afraid to cross those scary things uh, across from Lawrenceville, and uh, the the music submissions have closed, so uh, that means well, well how, what does that mean? How how soon are we going to see uh, a list of musicians that are going to be involved with this in the future? Uh, they are currently working on. We had over four hundred and. 50, I believe submission and I guess disclaimer a little bit psychic media services uh, Missy's on the on the committee yeah for this and helping out with there it. were a lot of submissions and our committee that's handling the musician selection is, is in the process of going through everything and there will be some announcements probably in an upcoming Millville music minute on the River's Edge YouTube Mm-hmm. So and Facebook, so keep an eye out for that. And that's something. If you do check on the page, uh, that is, I believe that that's updated weekly. Correctly, correct. Uh, it's the latest news about what is going on leading into the event. So yes. check it out, millvalemusic.org for all the information and become part of that. It's free, you guys. It's no, a you didn't free say that. fest. It's free. a free fest, uh, and as I said, it really does take over the entirety of that town. So. Uh, so look for that millvillemusic.org really cool thing going on over there so ooh, there's an interview with Bill Gates that's in my YouTube now thanks for that YouTube uh, Chilla you're somebody that's big on the forefront of technology uh, what's this about uh, the expense of phones in the future so so in the, this is uh, uh, we, we talk about this at work a lot um not necessarily work related, but in, in at lunch and, and things like that. How much? Where where is the expense? The 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 base the baseline phone expensiveness going to stop? So, and World Mobile Congress for those of you who don't know is at the end of the month. Typically, Samsung comes out with their announcements. Um, the Verge covered today that Samsung. I think a lot of people knew that Samsung is going to be. Uh, announcing their S9 device, and it's, it's actually coming in above the the uh, S8 cost. So last year, the phone, the S8, uh, entered in a price range of seven hundred and twenty dollars. Um, obviously, they have higher end devices like the Galaxy Note that came in just under a grand, much like the iPhone 10. Um, what makes me nervous is this new S9, which is to me their kind of mid-range to baseline it kind of sets the baseline i guess for for mainstream phones they're saying this is going to come in between 875 and 925 dollars which to me that's a significant significant jump Mm -hmm. and and i'm not I'm, i'm not saying i disagree with what i don't know what's gonna be in it so maybe it's it's magic and fairy dust and all kinds of things that are great um but I don't know that to me that price is a little high. I'm guessing it's because they're probably going to go to two cameras and they're going to go the the iPhone round, put in some kind of uh, front facing camera that does facial recognition. Some they're they're obviously doing something to to make this price jump, but I don't know. I I think it's getting a little out of control. So, it, it, but it, but it, it seems like they they're they're putting more they're packing more technology in this, right? Like, like we kind of saw with the iPhone X this year, it was like, hey, here's the phone that's not too much different. It's a little upgraded, you know, it's going to, hey, here's the thing where everything cutting bleeding edge that we could fit in a phone at a mass scale is here. And here's the price tag. And people are willing to pay for that. I mean, I, th- I isn't it kind of like the, yeah, of course, I still want to spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars on a Mac Pro or MacBook Pro or an Alienware computer to do all the things I want and be on the bleeding edge. But the difference is on the on the the, the different sides. Let's go. Let's look at um, Google. Right, you can get the Plus that sometimes has different. It's made by a different manufacturer, has more stuff, or you can get the smaller device. You can get the. Um, to me, the Note was like their line for that going above and beyond mm-hmm. you got the stylus you got the dual camera you got all kind of you got the i think the or one of the notes was the original one to have the retina scan um there was all that kind of stuff and to me this is their base phone so don't forget there's typically the like there was the s8 and the s8 plus which you get this is the baseline of the s9 that they're saying today which to me it's, it's i don't know i don't know okay well, playing devil's advocate on it, 
a lot of people are using their mobile devices now instead of like a laptop. You yeah, know, like even, that, or even a tablet. What's a computer? Oh, and, I, and that's one. Of, this is one of those devices that can do that. I just think, but I can go out and buy a four hundred four hundred dollar laptop. But can you make you know a call I mean? on like, it? And does yeah. it fit in your who pocket? Who makes a call on their phone anymore? I can use Hangout. Yeah, but who makes a cell phone call on their phone but anymore? But like we talked about a few months ago, you can still go and buy an uh, iPhone 6S. Yeah. They're still right, selling those. That, now, what'll be interesting is, will they keep the S8 around? Well, Typically. Yeah, well, no, 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 wait a minute. Let's, let's hold back for a second. Samsung makes more than the S series, don't they? Yeah, but a lot of them are only released overseas. They make the active line, but that comes in a, I mean. But, but there's they're still, they're still Samsung phones. The S series, I think, is their bleeding edge, isn't it? So when you go to something like, you know. Like but my, most of those phones are only sold at, like, Cricket and. Well, yeah. I mean, the, well, then, I'm talking about your mainstream, your mainstream carriers, and let me check like AT and T site right now. Okay, okay. It, which, which I think, if you're going mainstream character versus a, a Metro PCS that's here on the corner of my neighborhood, literally right over here, there's a Metro PCS. Uh, it, it, is it still there? I think it's still there. It's still there. And why okay. are you giving them free advertising? I don't know because it's it's an example. <laughs> uh, you know, those the, the people that go to your corner store Metro PCS Cricket are not interested in your AT&T level phones. One, they cannot afford an AT&T level service, and then they're not going to buy the, the, the latest S series on top of that. So I think this isn't the phone that Samsung's presenting for everybody. It's, it's the same, but, it's but the same there's concept. A huge, but there's a huge gap between the technologies. Okay. There's, gonna, there's, a, there's, there's a giant... So there's, there's no mid-range. Well, look, there's no middle of the road. Look so at the we're losing though. the middle-class phones. Yes. Look at the difference, though, between, like, you don't see as many people here driving a Tesla in comparison to, like, a Ford or a, a Toyota Corolla. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think with the phones, it's kind of a similar thing. They, they have the higher-end market with the people that are either going to pay for it because they're going to be using it for business things, or they simply have the money to spend on it and they don't care, mm-hmm. versus the people who... Or, or willing to put up with that price tag. Yeah, and, and then you've got the, the other f- side of that coin, the, the lower end where, like Sorg was talking about, the people who, you know, don't want to have a, a contractual thing. You know, maybe they've mm. got a, a limited budget on stuff, so they just want a basic phone that can kind of do the stuff that they want to have be competitive with their friends and, you know, be able to do certain things mm. without spending a ton of money on it. I I, I, th- I think Samsung isn't going to do this if they don't think people will pay for it. Yeah, right. I agree, but I guess I, there's no to me middle of the road. You're going to jump. You're you're going to have the the two hundred ish dollar f- older device or feature type phone, mm-hmm. and then you're going to have the thousand dollar range. There's no five six hundred dollar mid-range so you're easy to me you're either getting something that's way low end that's or you're getting something that's super high end and i think there's i think there's opportunity for that that middle of the road well isn't isn't the middle of the road just a couple of models old the high end from two years ago Mm -hmm. that's what that's but if you you look at what but if you look at what apple does i mean they had they came out. It has the same chipset. It has a lot of the same things. It just doesn't have the forward-facing camera and the, the OLED screen. So to me, it's not a couple-year-old device. It's current chipsets. It's current tech. It's current baseline technology. With either you get the additional bells and whistles, or you don't. And I feel like that's what Samsung went down the road of with the Note line. You got the bigger screen. You got dual cameras. You got a stylus. You got additional feature functionality, but a lot of it was the same chipsets, a lot of the same under the covers type stuff. To me, this is your, to your point, you're, you're going into year old, two year old tech. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see what happens with that. So anyways, um, I want to touch on a couple of quick things. Cause we are, we are uh, heading to the end of our time and, uh, and, and, and uh, we're going to have some stuff on gold, I think after this too. Uh, but I want to keep with the space theme for a moment. Yeah. Because I had some cool things from the week before before this You're awesome about my stuff t-shirt? happened today. Your t-shirt? Oh, okay. You do have a sweet t-shirt. What does that yeah, say? Yeah. For, what, describe that for the audio C- people. This is my CI. This is 
What are you holding up? Don't worry about what? that. Should I stop? Don't no, worry about man. that. That's this for me. This is my CIT shirt from when I was a counselor in training. I don't know. I was a counselor in training for three years, so I'm not sure exactly how old I was when I had this, but I couldn't have been more than 15. I don't know how the hell this fit me when I was 15. I wasn't a fat 15-year-old either, so I'm just amazed. I wore this for the for the rocket, of course, but uh, <laughs> it's amazing that I can still wear this shirt. That's great. And uh, I wanted to point out your shirt, too. You've got a you've got a Sesame Street Ninja Turtle shirt. I do, I do. For anybody who wants to check that out, it's I'm got all go. four. There you go. There you go. I have so, a question for Missy about you, uh, Missy. Which which Ninja Turtle is Sorg? I have I have my own theory. He's Mikey. Really? Yeah. I that's not what I would have gone with. I mean, you know, you're going to go, go with Donnie. See Donatello on the surface, you'd think Donatello, but I think Leonardo. Yeah, definitely not Leonardo. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't know you at all. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I thought Chilla would be the Donatello. That would make sense. I could. Yeah. He is wearing blue. <laughs> That's Leonardo. That's, that's Leonardo. Donatello's purple. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's got blue and red, so. Works blue out. and red make purple, yeah. yeah. We're good. Wow. Anyways, I was going to shout out to Curiosity's Mars Panorama that they released last week. Um, you know, once again, you know, this, these are images from Mars that are able to make a pretty cool, uh, uh, big picture. Well, panorama. go back up. Is that a, is that a roadster in the sky? Oh, well, it's not, not a yet. roadster. No, not no, it's yet. not a roadster in the sky. It's, it's a little too early. Uh, but yeah, and they kind of take you through and then it's, it's kind of cool because they do this and then they show you the path. Cause you can see where the curiosity has gone so far, uh, in the picture and then they describe some of the terrain as they go too. So again, we're uh, we're seeing images from Mars, That's guys. So cool. the, we're there. We're on Mars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, well, you could drop in a VR helmet with these pictures and be on Mars, and and that's just amazing that we you know been able to do that. Um, also, an interesting uh, discovery here on this planet. Uh, this was I had a I. Because of the source, I had to reread the article because I was like, this isn't for real. <laughs> uh, but uh, Fox News had mysterious lost Maya cities discovered in Guatemalan jungle. Uh, it's they, a misleading photo. It is. It is, too. That is not the city because if they hadn't discovered that yet. Well, there's a lot of jungle and there's a lot of places. It's you can see that on there. Google Maps. Okay. But basically, um, using uh, this is National Geographic has this, but using LADAR, and laser to measure distance in the Earth's surface, they were able to find underneath all that jungle jungle foliage, because we have not walked and mapped all that. People, S- someone has on Google. I'm someone, telling somebody you. has on Google. <laughs> uh, but they were able to discover a lot more uh, a lot more of this of the civilization there. And uh, they've multiplied, you know, the they, they thought that the, the the lowlands, Maya lowlands had between one to two million people. Now those those uh, those estimates are up to twenty million people for this at the time. That is insane, and of course this is, is it. A, I don't know. I don't know. That's like so out of context for me. It, it will, how many Mayans did I think there? Were? I have no idea how many Mayans I thought there were before you said that. We, I mean, there's always been like, hey, there were entire civilizations and they all disappeared, and it was, right. and that's mysterious, right? But now we've discovered so much more. Maybe there's more evidence. Who knows? Wow, there's uh, twenty times more people that have disappeared. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of scarier, right? So um, it would be it would be scarier if they were still alive. Uh, maybe. I mean, the Egyptians are still around. They're not alive, sort of. Well, not the same one. <laughs> but there's descendants. I mean, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are live Egyptians. Okay, I got you. That's Some, true. <laughs> people still live there. Yeah. This is a it's jungle. Still a place. Nobody lives here anymore. That would be cool if we found people still living there. That would be cool. Yeah. And that would also probably be scary. We should send our cat drones the- to check it out. <laughs> maybe maybe on that note john carmen thank you for joining us I'm hey sorry no I'm, problem i'm sorry i messed up your title hey i don't have one apparently you do you do you don't he's the mystery he's the mystery uh where can people find out things that you're into online well google okay you know google my name oh wait i thought that was a bad idea no I, wow. is, is that over it's not actually. It's not. He still keeps coming up in search results. Because we, we, when we had you on before, the other John Carmen, who was a politician in New Jersey, New Jersey, and he has opinions about women. Yeah, they're not great. 
No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't heard any. I haven't gotten any angry tweets recently, so he's laid low. That's good. That's good. That's good. But I still come up first, so just Google. Good. <laughs> you, you have you have the ultimate SEO. Yeah, just because I've been doing it for so damn long. You've been you longer than he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good job. No, he's not even on Twitter. <laughs> not after that. And stuff. after this, I'd stay off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for being in studio and joining us once again. Thank you. And, and retrieving your mad dog. <laughs> you didn't want it. I, it's temptation. Don't, yeah. John Chichilla, of course. Chilla on the Twitters. Chillatech.net. Hey, we, we never did our favorite commercials from the Super no, Bowl. No, we're going to have to do that for gold now. Okay. Good reason to get on the Patreon when we go along here. Trying to keep it uh, for our partners, keeping it around that hour, hour point. And, of course, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. SorgatronMedia.com, a lot of great shows going on. And also, uh, uh, please check out our friends at Bold Pittsburgh doing some great things, including the Bold Brunch. That was in here. That uh, episode we, we recorded before the Super Bowl uh, is now up on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed, and it should be uh, uh, linked as well over on boldpgh.com a lot of great stuff going on over there supporting uh, local Pittsburgh area things um, of course check out everything and we're here at 7pm Eastern Time on the Awesome Cast Facebook page every week we'll see you guys next time uh, thank you to our awesome, awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.